Whole life insurance, is it a silver bullet for everything or is it just a scam? Who should consider whole life insurance in Canada and who should think twice before getting one? In today's episode of The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, I'm going over every detail of whole life insurance in Canada so you can make the right financial decisions. And I know you guys have been waiting for this, so make sure you stay until the end. Okay, let's get started with understanding what is whole life insurance first. As I mentioned many times in my video, there are two primary life insurance options, term life insurance and permanent life insurance. Term life insurance is a great choice if you want to be covered for a short period of time. It's mainly beneficial because it has more affordable premium than permanent life insurance. However, it will eventually expire at the age of 60 to 70. So what if you still have a mortgage? Or what if you want to leave some money as a family legacy? And more importantly, when we pass away, that's the time we pay the heaviest bill on the RSP leftover or the capital gain tax on the asset that you accumulated for the past 40 years. By that time, renewing a term policy will come with a very hefty premium. The alternative is permanent life insurance which provides coverage for the policyholder's entire life. And 9 or 10 times, the plan also contains a saving portion while allows you to access it while alive. Now obviously, the premium for permanent insurance will be higher than term because it's a guaranteed payout product. So let's look at the good of the whole life insurance first. The keyword is guarantee. There are at least 5 guarantees that a properly structured whole life insurance should bring to the table. First off, as the name suggests, whole life insurance covers for your entire life. That means you know your family will be guaranteed receiving that money no matter you pass away at age 50 or age 150 years old. And with properly structured, the death benefit will keep increasing. And unlike auto insurance, the premium for whole life insurance will be locked for your entire lifetime. The second guarantee is that even though the plan is covered for the entire life, you can choose to pay everything off in 5, 10 or even 20 years. Imagine you just need to commit the plan for 5 years or 10 years and you get to own an asset that appreciates in value for your entire life. Third, the most attractive part of the whole life insurance is that the plan contains cash value, a saving part that grows over time and offers various utilities. You might ask, hey Thomas, why don't I just invest it in other areas then? Well, first off, it's 100% tax shelter, meaning no tax man can hammer you with the investment taxes. And unlike TFSA, it's limited to $6,500 per year. For life insurance, the higher the coverage amount, the bigger the tax shelter room. And second, because the investment is relatively safe, there are two kinds of return. One is by contractual return, meaning the insurance company guarantee you will have this amount of growth by this amount of year. And on top of that, what attracts the Canadian the most is the dividend return, which is the return from the investment chosen by the insurance company. The investment is mainly based on fixed income, such as the mortgage, bonds, and term deposit, making the dividend return very stable. In 2022, where the stock market drops 20 to 30% down, whole life dividend is still yielding at 5 to 6%. Adding the two returns together, each year your cash value is guaranteed higher than the previous year and will not have a negative return. This is a chart that I pulled up from one insurance company's marketing material. In the last 30 years, the Canadian index fund is an average of 9% per year, where the standard deviation of 16%, meaning it can go up 16% or go down by 16% as well. First is for the whole life insurance dividend scale is at 7.8% with only 1.8% volatility each year. It's higher return than a term deposit and much lower deviation than the stock market. The fifth guarantee for whole life insurance can provide is in regards to lending. Should you face a financial storm or investment opportunity, with the cash value that have been building up, you can neither withdraw or there's an option to borrow the funds. And because it's a loan, then it's not an investment income, so therefore can potentially be tax-free. And for the interest, you have the option to defer it as well. And this is a very unique feature, as a lot of experienced investors or business owners need flexibility and efficiency. 
If you borrow from the home equity line of credit, you need credit check first. You also need to repay the interest every single year. And potentially, your house may not worth as much as your loan during a market downturn. However, a whole life insurance guarantees the lending, and also since there's no native return and also with a tax-free death benefit, rest assured the loan is covered at the time that you pass away. And with all those guarantees, there are a lot of strategies that you can apply. For instance, a lot of people like the infinite banking strategy, where they borrow the cash value right away to invest into other places while enjoying the steady appreciation of the assets. Or corporate wealth transfer strategy, for example, where business owners use it as a vehicle to save more on corporate taxes and move more assets back to the personal side tax efficiently. So if you want to know how these strategy works, make sure you leave a comment below. Well, with so many benefits, then why so many people think that the whole life insurance is a scam? Now, let's take a look on the bad side of the whole life insurance. One of the biggest downsides for many Canadians is the cost. As we mentioned, with so many guarantees in the whole life insurance, the premium will be much higher than term insurance and even a universal life insurance is not suitable for everyone. For example, a 40-year-old person looking for a term 30-year policy for a $250,000 will be around $500 per year. If it's the permanent universal life insurance, it will be around $2,000 per year. However, if it's a whole life insurance, it will be around $4,000 per year. Obviously, not everyone can commit to a $4,000 plan for the next 20, 30 years. Now, let's go to the cash value component. While it's undoubtedly an asset, certain people may not like the rate of return. Since the rate of return of the dividend is based on fixed income, which is around 4 to 5% per year, when compared to, say, the stock investment or real estate, where average is 8 to 10% in the long run, the return on the cash value may come off as a modest. Apple stock might make life insurance seem like a boring investment. If you are young and want to grow your asset as fast as possible, putting all your money in the whole life insurance, then for sure you will not be happy. And the other part that people complain the most is a plan's transparency. Unlike the universal life insurance where you know exactly how much of the premium goes to the cost of insurance and how much goes to the investment, whole life insurance on the other hand is not as transparent. The cost of insurance and the saving portion is bundled together, making it hard to calculate the real return for the investment. Also, similar to a defined benefit pension plan, you as the policyholder don't get to control where you want to invest. The insurance company will tell you the direction and the portion where they are investing, but again, you don't have to control over the investment portion. The other disadvantage of whole life insurance is about the commitment. Like mortgages, you need to commit the payment no matter what situation you're in. If you get laid off or you're sick, still, you must commit it for the mortgage payment. If you don't have the money to pay, then your house is gone. Whole life insurance, on the other hand, works on a similar principle but a little better. For any reasons you have trouble paying for the plan, you might be able to use the dividend to pay for the policy. This is called the premium offsets. Or you can borrow from the cash value to pay the plan, but that comes with an interest. Alright, now we talk about the good and the bad of whole life insurance, let's talk about the ugly part. I know I will piss off a lot of people, but here's the ugly truth. That there are a lot of inexperienced advisors that try to sell you the whole life insurance mainly for the agent's best interest, but not yours. As the commission is very lucrative. The ironic part is not about the product, it's actually the agent him or herself. Over the years, I saw a lot of over promises about the plan. For example, I remember my parents got a whole life insurance pay for life as well too. The agent said after 30 years, the plan can self-sustain as there should be enough dividend to pay for the policy. Well, it was partly true as the policy dividend rate was at 15% back in the 90s, so it makes sense at that time. But now dividend rate is only around 5 to 6%, my parents still have to pay for the policy now. If a parent cannot commit to the plan and cancels it, it's no longer the agent's business because there's no chargeback involved. And ugly truth number two, that the whole life insurance is not for average Canadians. Whole life insurance is designed to help the rich get richer. Rich people have no problem making good real return on their investment. Now, they need to find ways to preserve their assets from the taxman. Well, whole life insurance is the perfect item for them. Tax-free death benefit, 
tax shelter savings account, able to borrow the money back while collecting return on a dividend, what more can you ask for? Okay, now hopefully you understand the whole life insurance a little better. To summarize it, I would say whole life insurance is a very powerful tool against market risk, tax risk, and estate risk. However, it's not for every Canadian. In order to really utilize the pros of the plan, you want to commit minimum of $10,000 per year into the plan. So I think there are three to four groups of people who benefit from this plan. First group, the rich people for obvious reason. The second group will be business owners as they are facing a 50% investment tax bracket and there are not a lot of corporate tax shelter accounts available. The third group is for high-income people that they have a high tax bracket and they max out their RSP, tax-free saving, and they need other vehicles to shelter their saving. And the last group is actually for retirees. Given that today's market, a lot of retirees are letting go their investment properties, so now they have a whole bunch of cash and still need to grow to beat inflation. And relatively, there's not enough tax-free saving room for them. So whole life insurance can act as a medical and legacy fund tool. Life insurance shouldn't be complicated. Incorporating the right life insurance policy is an important part of a comprehensive financial strategy. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions about your life insurance plan, leave your comments below. I still read every comment, so your input matters to me. This is Thomas. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.